Hello everyone, Fountain Pens writing here with a new Fountain Pen review. Today we are going to take a look at the Opus 88 Bella Red. Let's start! The pen arrives in this box covered by a red sleeve where you can see a nice logo, the name Opus 88 and fine white instruments. This sleeve comes off and you have a nice black box with a magnetic closure. Open the box and you have the pen with a small glass a dropper. There used to be a little booklet with instruction but I don't have it anymore. Now this pen is an eyedropper fountain pen with a shut off valve, so no cartridges is provided. We will see this kind of filling mechanism in a minute. Now let's take a look at the pen. The Opus 88 Bella Red is a large fountain pen made in Taiwan that uses the Bocknib units and it is one of the few pens that uses the mighty 2.3mm stub nib. As you can see the pen is chunky but it is lighter and incredibly comfortable in the hand. The resin of this pen is stunning, full of swirls of red, black, yellow, cream, green, orange and brown and also the feeling of this acrylic is something unique, it feels more softer and warmer than a normal acrylic. The top finial is made of dark brown shiny resin and it is large and rounded. A large white band divides the finial from the clip made of a glossy black metal that matches the pen perfectly with its width. On the clip there is Opus 88 printed in orange letters. The cap tapers up to this point and then tapers down to its end where there is a small step down to the translucent red ink window. The barrel tapers up like the cap to this point and then gently tapers down to the second large white band dividing the rounded knob from the barrel, a knob made of the same dark brown resin as the top finial. A little tip, use a small amount of silicone grease on the rod. You don't need to pull the entire rod out but it will make it smoothly and it is useful when you clean the barrel. The cap and screws with almost three full turns revealing this beautiful section made of the same acrylic as the rest of the pen. The section has a particular shape, very comfortable in the hand. It has a small rounded flare and tapers gently up until the threads. As I have already mentioned, the nib is a box stainless steel nib, a 2.3mm stub nib that has the Opus 88 engraved on it and the number 2.3. And here we have the classic box plastic feed. Now, here is how this felling mechanism works. You unscrew the section, where you can see a small plastic o-ring useful to seal the section with the ink chamber. Take the eyedropper that you fill with ink, and then use the eyedropper to fill the entire baller with the ink. You have to do this for a couple of times because you can fill this pen with a stunning 3.5 mm of ink. Then you screw the section, and a little trick, before you reach the o-ring, put the pen upside down and slowly screw the section, in this way you allow the ink to fill the nib units, but do it on the inkwell because you will see some ink dripping from the tip of the nib. Now to write with this pen you have to unscrew a little bit the knob and this opens the shut off valve allowing the ink to flow from the ink chamber into the nib unit, easy peasy. Now it's time to compare the pen with other fountain pens. As I said before, this pen is a large chunky pen, but not too long to be uncomfortable. You can see how large it is compared with the Pelican, M200, Lime Safari and Pilot HU3. Uncapped, the pen is only slightly longer than the Pilot. You can post the pen securely, but it becomes unbalanced and ridiculously long. When I received the pen, the nib was a mess. I have worked heavily on this nib, fixing a baby bottoms problem, aligning the tines and opening them, 
flushing the feed to remove any oil that was preventing the ink from flowing onto the paper. Now it works properly, but it wasn't everyone's job. Nevertheless, you cannot expect to write very fast with this type of nib. The feed simply won't keep the ink flowing consistently. But writing in Gothic or Italic with this nib is exceptionally satisfying. It is so easy and controllable, the perfect nib size for those starting out with stub nibs and this type of script. As always, for all my writing samples, I use the Waterman Blue to get a consistent comparison between the nib to see if they are dry or wet. After my adjustments, the nib is very wet. The nib is a stainless steel but not extremely stiff. And being a stub nib, it offers a natural line variation from a fine to a 2 plus millimeter. This Bella Red is fantastic. The shape fits all types of hands, not only the big ones. It's perfectly balanced and has a huge ink capacity. The filling mechanism seals the pen perfectly and you can travel with airplanes without problems. Regardless of how much ink is in the barrel, this pen has never bapped or linked ink thanks an additional o-ring on the nib section. The material is wonderful, simply stunning even the tactile feeling is something unique, and I like big pens. For $100-$120 or oil, you get a fantastic pen with a peculiar filling mechanism with a huge amount of ink ve with very precise tolerances. Now, the nib, yes, it was a mess, but it was a problem of this particular nib. Okay, maybe the bulk nibs are not always perfectly tuned. Only the bock nib I bought from FP Nibs works perfectly. The others, well, they all have had problems. But this is a problem of the nib, not of the pen. And you can always buy another Opus 88 bock nib to use with this pen. And that's all. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please consider leaving a thumb up. For the next review, we will take a look at the Clyde Pen Company Green Venom. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, you won't miss that video. See you soon.